Ignite to Impact. You're listening to Ignite to Impact, where we bring you stories so that you can unleash your influence to make a positive difference. We hope to inform and inspire meaningful change in yourself, within others, and in your community. I'm Dr. Geneva, your host, leadership coach, strategist, and best-selling author of Justice on the Jersey Shore. And you know, we sit down every week with influencers to find out how they do what they do to make an impact. Now, many of my listeners frequently make comments, drop me notes, ask me, well, Dr. Geneva, how can we make a difference in our community? We listen to you and you give us great tips about making changes in ourselves learning about self-care, learning um, all kinds of things about helping and working with others. But if we want to do something in our community to make a difference, how do we do that? Well, guess what? I've got a master executive, nonprofit leader with me in studio today in Charles Anderson, president and CEO of the Detroit Urban League, and that's the Southeastern Michigan Detroit Urban League, I think. So I'm going to say hello to Charles, and he's going to make sure, because I know it was once the Detroit Urban League, but then since then you've expanded it. So as I say hello to you, Correct me on well, I your, cannot your, I cannot correct <laughs> Dr. Geneva. Oh yes, but, you uh, can. <laughs> but you know, enlarge my territory. Yes. But the uh, it is the Detroit Urban League doing business as the Urban League of Detroit. Okay. In, uh, in southeastern Michigan. But, okay. Uh, so we're still, you know, we're still mixed up. We do. We're both names. The IRS knows us as the Detroit Urban League. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're doing business as the Urban League of Detroit in okay. southeastern Michigan. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. But the Urban League is a national organization, it is. It been is. around for a while, right? Well, the National Urban League uh, started a year after the NACP. Uh, the NACP was founded in 1909. The Urban League was founded in 1910. So mm-hmm. uh, we've been mm-hmm. around a, a few years, mm-hmm. 109 years. Two mm-hmm. sister-like civil rights organizations, mm-hmm. ironically or interestingly, not ironic, but interestingly, I grew up in the NAACP uh-huh. in uh, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I was a, a youth council member of the Charlotte Mecklenburg NAACP Youth Council, president of that youth council at one time, and then um, uh, a state officer of the NAACP on the national board of the mm-hmm. NAACP as a mm-hmm. youth member. And I actually worked for the NAACP mm-hmm. two years for the Detroit branch NAACP as the youth director mm-hmm. and uh, four years on the national staff for under Dr. Benjamin Lawson Hooks as the director of the Midwest region. So I mm-hmm. covered seven states for the NAACP before joining the Urban League. Mm-hmm. So. so you were born and reared in the NAA. Uh, so it's almost seems like a natural journey over mm-hmm. to the Urban League. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it was not nas- necessarily a natural journey because mm-hmm. there's a, somewhat a professional uh, tension between the two organizations, particularly at the ground level. Okay. Um, most people see the, the NACP as more of a grassroots, volunteer-operated organization. Mm-hmm. And so when you live in Detroit, we're sort of spoiled. The Detroit uh, NACP is probably one of maybe 10, 20 that actually have paid staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other 2,500 plus mm-hmm. affiliate branches around the country of the NACP are primarily volunteer mm-hmm. volunteers. Mm-hmm. They're mostly volunteers of grassroots. Mm-hmm. And in fact, when the, in it, when the Urban League interviewed me many years ago, become president, they asked me the difference between the two organizations. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you know, the NACP, um, uh, sh- uh, knocks down the door. Okay. But the Urban League walks in. Okay. And, and okay. Uh, so, so uh, if the two organizations are really functioning and working in a community mm-hmm. collaboratively, then a lot of good things happen in that community because mm-hmm. the NACP is more of an ab- advocacy organization. Mm-hmm. And the Urban League is more the direct service organization. Okay. And so uh, that's what we mean when yeah. we say. Um, the NAACP would knock down the door yes. because they do advocacy, advocacy. around civil rights Correct. and and um, 
all of that mm -hmm. to to you know create the doors yeah. to open yes. and the end of and the de Urban, Urban League, League yeah. walking in because you're we, into programming and direct, program services. direct services. Direct mm -hmm. services, and so that that's the difference. Because so, so you know, the NACP. When I worked for the NACP, for example, we had something called the Fair Share Economic Development Program. Mm -hmm. you know, fair Share, making sure corporations were given a fair share of uh, uh, contracts and opportunities to African Americans and the uh, business people and and, and workers. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, the Urban League has staff that's working in workforce career development. Yes. We're, we're screening people. We're helping them. So we work with those companies to help them identify candidates for jobs. And then we can then, of course, uh, refer them to those companies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with the staff that the Urban League has and the advocacy on the side of the Urban League, or the NACP rather, mm -hmm. uh, the two organizations are working uh, collaboratively mm -hmm. and making sure that the community is benefiting from their presence. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, what it's all about. Yes. Um, and so having um, organizations like that in any community mm -hmm. is a real plus yes. for, for people. Yes. And so you know, this, this whole notion or question of how do you really make an impact? Mm -hmm. How do you make a difference? You know, I want to dissect that yes. with you. I want to first talk about um, what it is that you do, that what it is that leaders do in organizations like the Detroit Urban League. How do you do your leadership? If that doesn't yeah. make sense, well, that question, you know, what I, I'm trying to I, get I, to. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, okay. something might come out that All right. makes sense. But... <laughs> <laughs> see, see now, now, my listeners, y'all need to know. Yeah. Charles Anderson and I have worked together for many, many years. Yeah. And we have created impact mm -hmm. and change mm -hmm. in a whole lot of different areas for many, mm -hmm. many years. So as we talk this talk, he know what I mean, yeah. what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> but see, we're going to keep it yeah. light and live because, see, we want our listening audience right. to be yeah, entertained engaged. Yeah, and engaged. engaged. So but, go ahead. But you know, and the word really is engaged. <laughs> yes, Because it is. when I grew up in, uh, in North Carolina, what got my impetus for getting involved, I went to the school system in Charlotte Mecklenburg. Okay. And our schools were segregated. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the purpose of keeping us apart. Mm -hmm. uh, busing was not a problem. Okay. Uh, our school district bused me past two or three elementary schools just to get me to an elementary school 30 miles away mm -hmm. that was all black. Mm -hmm. um, and so when the Supreme Court ruled that the Charlotte Mecklenburg schools were not equal, that mm -hmm. they had to integrate those schools. Mm -hmm. My school district had a surplus of buses. Okay. There was no problem with busing African-American kids. The problem was when white kids had to be bused. Mm -hmm. There was nothing different for me. There was nothing unusual for my school to get books that had been used by Myers Park, which was a upscale place similar to Gross Point. Mm -hmm. uh, so we would get books uh, after they had used them three, four, or five years, and they would send those books to us. Uh, they rode the bus for the purpose of uh, keeping them keeping themselves away from us. So they got the new school buses. We got the used school buses. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, so when the slogan came out, it's not the bus, it's us. Mm -hmm. That was true okay. in, in Charlotte Mecklenburg School okay. Districts. It was really, really true because when the Supreme Court ruled in 1970 to integrate the Charlotte Mecklenburg schools, uh, we had a surplus of buses mm -hmm. uh, so they could save money on buses. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, they didn't want to integrate okay. the schools like okay. they did. So mm -hmm. so what happened at that point, I was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was active in my school. I was in junior achievement. I was trying to mm -hmm. ran track. I was trying to do things. So I had an interest in making sure our student body went well and we got uh, equal opportunities. So I got involved in NAACP when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. The NAACP was the impetus behind the, the court case that segregate, that integrated the Charlotte Mecklenburg School District. And uh, uh, I just kind of gravitated myself to being involved with NAACP at that point. And because uh, and, at that point, and still at this point, young people could make a difference and mm -hmm. were making a difference. Mm -hmm. So. I became active within ACP in, in high school, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know the rest is history. So, so are are you saying one of the things that leaders do, or um, is 
perhaps start early. Yes. So, so you know, because I know there are um, the research does well, say if yeah. if you if you're active young, mm-hmm. you carry that through your adult life. Well, there was an epiphany, somewhat of like a, a, a young another guy, maybe a year older than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, for somehow or another, I passed the cross. And he says something to me one time. You know, you and I know that there are always people telling us what needs to be done, right. what somebody ought to do, and this right. ought to happen. So I was waxing eloquently about what somebody <laughs> needed to do. You know, they ought to get involved, they ought to change it. Right. And he looked at me, mm-hmm. and it's like he hit me upside the head with a two by four. Mm-hmm. But he said these simple words. Why don't you do something then? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and so okay. if you can make yourself a committee of one and do something yourself and quit telling the Urban League or the NACP, or anybody else what they ought to be doing. The question is, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. So when he said that to me, that was like a, a light bulb going off in my head. You know, maybe mm-hmm. I can do something then. Mm-hmm. So um, Ronnie Cunningham was his name. Mm-hmm. But Ronnie uh, said those simple words to me which was enough to get me up off my you-know-what mm-hmm. and start doing something. And so start being that leader. Being involved in ACP, doing voter registration, talking about get out to vote. Mm-hmm. I mean, those that's where it all started. Mm-hmm. And, and I was just thinking about that today. You know, mm-hmm. if, um, if people would just get more involved, you know, there are a lot of folk, for example, advocating for reparations. And I was thinking, so what if, if, you, if rep- reparations were approved but you had to be a, an active voter to get them. Mm. And then the mm-hmm. irony is, if there were more active voters, we wouldn't still be having this debate about reparations mm-hmm. because the political process would have turned that chapter and it would have happened. It still could happen if people understand the connection with political activism, being involved, going to the polls and voting, mm-hmm. and in advocating for something that they believe in. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting um, perspective argument. And and just this whole notion of a committee of one. Yes. Do you really believe that one person can make a difference? One vote makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I truly do believe that one person can make a difference. because Because when you have one person but a collected numbers of one persons okay you have a powerful group of people doing things Mm -hmm. and so i do believe that uh, as long as you're not in it for visibility and praise and recognition if Mm -hmm. you're in it for the realism of what it really is then that's what makes a difference you know i had my late pastor julius caesar hope used to say you know uh, if you're doing things just for praise by man don't look for a reward in heaven because you've mm-hmm. already gotten your reward. Okay. Uh, you got your reward here on earth. So uh-huh. don't be looking for praise for doing things. You know, if I'm feeding the homeless, don't take a picture of yourself feeding the homeless. Just feed the homeless. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. don't take a picture of yourself helping somebody and then put it on Facebook or social media. Say, look mm-hmm. at me. I'm doing something. Mm-hmm. But if you're doing it for the purpose, when you look around our community, I can guarantee you, there are hundreds, if not thousands of people doing little simple things every right. day, helping individuals, stopping, giving a dollar to the person mm-hmm. in the corner, but they're not mm-hmm. photographing themselves in exactly. prison. And that's, exactly. that's what I mean by a committee of one, one just doing yes. what, you, what needs to be done, mm-hmm. and it makes a difference. If you get up as one individual on election day, and take your you know what to the polls and vote so that's to your, the polls that's your committee of one action mm-hmm. and if we have more people doing that single act then that makes a difference collectively for us all mm-hmm. you know my dad and I, I just uh, released a book about him but he was he was like that committee of one mm-hmm. as you describe mm-hmm. um and and you know and sometimes you start out with a collective yes but depending on what it is you're doing or how you're doing, you may end up being out there by yourself. You could be. You, you know, could look behind and, you. And that's and right. There's no and, and there's no one really there. And, you know, in his case, he he had decided that he was going to challenge the legal system that prevented him from uh, owning a home mm-hmm. where he wanted to. Yes. And so he fought that battle pretty much by himself Mm -hmm. all the way to the Supreme Court of New Jersey. 
And I, when I was, as I've talked to him many, 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 many times, that um, being that one, mm-hmm. sometimes that leadership can be lonely. It can have be. You, have you found that in your well, career of well, heading so many organizations and yeah, well, being the number one? Yeah, I tell you, um, you kind of have thick skin because when you take a position – chances are somebody else has the opposite position okay even in your own community mm-hmm. uh, you know I, you know for the school systems or advocating for education for employment opportunities uh, working out an arrangement or deal or um, coming to some kind of conclusion you're gonna always have uh, someone who is criticizing what you do okay. uh, or what you didn't do you know mm-hmm. you, you know I should have cussed someone out when mm-hmm. I used diplomacy mm-hmm. you know but some people are more anxious to uh, to make a point than to get you know something totally done you know in in during the civil rights era for example uh, when you found people in it for themselves it was easy for the opposition to control them if the group of people were out in front of a store picketing mm-hmm. because the store wasn't hiring African-Americans who shopped there, sometimes the owner would come out to the crowd and ask the leader, what do you want? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, a you know, committed, dedicated leader would say, it's not what I want, it's what we want. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if, if it's what I want, you know, that they would hire the leader, give the leader a job. Mm-hmm. And then... The rest of the people would go home, and then the leader would get fired a week later, and they're right back where they started from. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, when you read the history of, of Dr. Martin Luther King, when Dr. King went to Montgomery to his church, uh, historically, the white community, according to the book, had a practice of buying preachers a suit. Mm-hmm. You buy each new preacher a suit when he comes to town, mm-hmm. and from his on, he's dedicated and obligated to you. Mm-hmm. Dr. King never got his suit. Never got his suit. He never got his suit. Mm -hmm. So he became Mm -hmm. the thorn in the side and the advocate for integrating the bus system in Montgomery Mm -hmm. with Dr. Rosa Park. Mm -hmm. Park. So you got to have a lot going on in yourself, the leader in you, uh, to be able to withstand, to push through challenges, to face adversities. Um, What advice do you give, would you give, To young leaders, young leaders now, Mm -hmm. who are coming along, who, you know, want to make that impact, recognize are often lonely and have to, on a day to day basis, push through that, uh, those adversities. What kind of, what kind of tips do you give them, Charles? uh, First, I always say, if you truly want to do something to make a difference, then don't worry if no one saw you. Okay, you know, do it anyway. That's my point I made a few moments yes. ago. Don't don't worry if no one saw you. Don't mm-hmm. worry if you didn't post it on Facebook or mm-hmm. Instagram. It don't work. Do it because mm-hmm. it make a it made or makes a difference. And so, if we're truly dedicated to making a difference, then go out and make a difference. Mm-hmm. At some point, it will be recognized. Uh, but too often, I see folk who are more looking for recognition and praise. And not necessarily for getting the job done. Okay. You know, so if I registered 20 people to vote, um, maybe no one saw me doing it, but mm-hmm. I did increase the voting power. Yes. But you know what? Those 20 people know mm-hmm. I helped them. Exactly. And I know mm-hmm. I helped them. Exactly. And mm-hmm. so that's what's important. And I, I think, uh, you know, this, um, the words, you know, self aggrandizement, the, uh, uh, the belief in, promoting themselves you know we have a president who has a who's a narcissist you know if if you all caught up in yourself you know <laughs> the rest of whatever you're doing doesn't really mean anything you mm-hmm. did it for the recognition mm-hmm. and then you won't even do it again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but consistency and staying you know um, staying the course is what's important i think and don't worry about whether Geneva, Dr. Geneva saw it, or mm-hmm. Ian Charles saw it. Don't mm-hmm. worry if you didn't get a plaque. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. Do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just do it. Yeah. So, so for a young leader, so let's say young leader, you know, hey, I'm, I'm ready. I want to make an impact. I, I want to give back. I'm, I'm not worried about, you know, the praise or the recognition. I'm ready to do it. How does a young leader 
or someone who wants to give back Mm -hmm. because you know you don't always have to have a title or position to be a leader you know and and i i I like to talk to everyday leaders um so so how would an everyday leader decide what area to work in what problem to solve how how do you do that how do you decide where you make an impact well i think you have to pick what you're interested in and helping okay. with, I think you have to decide. You know, in my case, um, you know, it's about community opportunities and political process, and I started doing voter registration and voter education. Okay. Um, you know, um, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't worry about, you know, I guess it was like the, tur- the, the, the tortoise in the hair, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not showing off like the hair is i'm just like the turtle the steady okay. going along steady and, going along. and uh, things come to those who do good i mean mm-hmm. i think good things happen you know when i when we were looking for employment opportunities i always told people that applying for the job in you know, the cream will rise to the top mm-hmm. <laughs> don't mm-hmm. worry about uh, how much you can sway the people because if you do a good job in the interview if you have a good track record if you can demonstrate what your past has been, folk who are who are truly trying to hire the right person, the cream will rise to the top. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you force the cream to the top, uh, usually those people crash and burn. Mm-hmm. But when you mm-hmm. find the cream that has risen to the top, then you found a prize. And I mm-hmm. think um, uh, I don't, you know, it's simplistic and as simplistic, simplistic as I make it sound, I just think it's the steady course of making a contribution. If your area is in education, then help out at the school. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. uh, participate uh, in the PTA. Uh, demonstrate to your children what's important. My younger, mm-hmm. my one of my daughters, when uh, she was growing up, and I was very active as an uh, employee with the NACP. I took to a lot of events, a lot of banquets a lot of speeches i had to make and she had to sit at a table while i sat at the head table Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. i always acknowledged my daughter and now Mm -hmm. my daughter is president of her pta Mm -hmm. and a very active part Mm -hmm. of the community very vocal very concerned very Mm -hmm. much aware of what's going on around her in her community and she's involved as a mom of four five kids Mm -hmm. she's still involved in her uh, community, in her child's school. Mm-hmm. And so, and again, that's that's a really important tidbit because this whole aspect of role modeling yes. and the responsibilities uh, and what leaders can do. Yes. Uh, and again, it goes back to everyday leadership because yeah. it doesn't matter about yeah. that title or what right. you're doing, right. uh, what you position you might have, but every day, every day. you could be a role model, right. an example every, of how you give back. Um, and so that role model. And then I like the, you know, go to where your interests are. Yeah. It, you know, so that uh, if you're already interested in an area, find ways to volunteer, make mm-hmm. an impact, mm-hmm. do, something. do something. Be that committee of I one mean, in the, your interest area. The slogan, just do it, just is do really it. real. I mean, okay. it's really a real, just do it. I just think, um, um, you know, we don't feel like we're doing something. We don't feel like anyone knows it. But if you feel like you're doing something positive and good, mm-hmm. then keep doing it. Mm-hmm. And... Um, don't stop doing it because nobody gave you a prize. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, if you're looking for a prize, then give yourself an award and go on about your business. That's what I was going to ask because, you know, pe- people are humans. Yeah, yeah. We're human beings. And, you know, everybody likes a you know pat on the back, yeah. nice job yes. done. So where yeah. do leaders get yeah. an okay from? I was just, um, we were just finishing up um, uh, uh, taping mm-hmm. um uh, before the conversation with you, moving from one to another, and uh, Gerald McBride, whose studio we're in, was saying to me, he just wanted to pause for a moment and acknowledge his appreciation of the conversations that we have with people Mm -hmm. on Ignite to Impact and Mm -hmm. that where, in fact, these conversations are reaching hundreds of people Mm -hmm who are impacted and we might not know that Mm -hmm. but he just wanted to stop for a moment and acknowledge that to me right and you know i don't get that a lot and it made me feel good so so we as people we we, 
we do need acknowledgement and handshakes and pat on the back. So how do well, leaders yeah, yeah. kind of get that? Well, yeah. uh, and don't you think yeah. that we probably owe to leaders at mm-hmm. some it's, points yes. and times a thank you? Yeah, I think, well, I think there are several things that happen. Okay. I think we happen, first of all, you know, biblically, don't forget to assemble yourselves okay. among the brethren. All right. So when you associated with the things that are good, then you're around other people doing that. You know, mm-hmm. I talked about the committee of one, mm-hmm. but the reality is that you recognize there are other people like you. Okay. So you remember years ago when we founded the Black Human Reach Service? Yes. Uh, I mean, Black you, Human you, Service you, Administrators. administrators. Yes. You, and again, the Urban League, we have an association of executives, and we talk about how mm-hmm. it's so important for those of us in the jobs as CEOs of Urban Leagues, for example, mm-hmm. to have an opportunity to come together and interact mm-hmm. with one another, mm-hmm. to reassure, okay. reassure everyone, each other, to learn from each other, to push each other, to commend each other. So assembling ourselves with people like us doing what we like to do mm-hmm. is always okay. important. I think Good. that's important. Don't forget to serve yourselves mm-hmm. among the brethren. So sometimes you got to get up and go to church instead of sitting mm-hmm. there watching it on TV. You got to mm-hmm. assemble yourself with people who are like you. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that's a, one of those things that we have to do because mm-hmm. you're, you're right. We do want to be acknowledged and recognized. Mm-hmm. But when you get a chance to get with people who are doing what you do, mm-hmm. then you get a chance to get that reassurances and that that, that impetus on, yeah, you know, we're we're all on the right track. Uh, right. Uh, and it's a, it's a support mechanism, mechanism too. Mechanism. Yes, mm-hmm. very much so. I mean, mm-hmm. that's important. I mean, I, when uh, some of my colleagues call me from around the country asking me questions, because um, they, you know, they see that, you know, I'm just steady along the way. You know? Right. They just want to hear from what I had to say, mm-hmm. but I also want to hear from what they say. You know, mm-hmm. a friend of mine retired um what, three four years ago but I just mm-hmm. talked to him yesterday because mm-hmm. he likes to talk to me I like to talk to him so we try to stay in touch and support one another uh, and encourage one another mm-hmm. and that is so important but there's a gospel song that says encourage okay. yourself all right <laughs> so, that's right yeah. that's right it keeps coming back yes. to you know the leader in you yes, yes. <laughs> you know it, yes. it 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 really really yes. does well if you're just joining us on ignite to impact i am so glad you're part of this Great conversation, inspiring and informative conversation with N. Charles Anderson, president, CEO, leader, uh, Detroit Urban League in southeastern Michigan, uh, but someone who's been, you know, with the NAACP, the Urban League, and corporate America corporate as America, well. Oh, corporate America brought me to Detroit. Okay. <laughs> and so has been all around and yeah. has had the opportunity Don't to look. Government. I want and for, government. For that's right. That's right. Who, so who's been <laughs> there everywhere, been there, done that, everything, yeah. and has seen all the different faces of leadership. And we're really having this great conversation about making an impact and how do you do it if you're interested in making change in the community just do it is what he says and um so we've been talking about various things you you know charles i want to just take your attention for a moment to Mm -hmm. get your perspective to the national scene Mm -hmm. there's so much going on in conversations today about civil rights and race Mm -hmm. and diversity and inclusion, Mm -hmm. all those kinds of conversations that are happening, not only at the top levels of our government, but among the uh, political candidates and leaders of both parties Mm -hmm. in in our country. Uh, You know, what would you, how would you describe the uh, current state of affairs um, with in terms of race relations and the role that you see of leaders? Well, I think uh, it's, in one hand, it's like it's a rudderless boat. You know, it's like no one is providing direction and structure. And, and where we are, I think, as a country is that we are accustomed. I mean, not just with the last number 44, Barack Obama, but with every president prior. We've always been accustomed to that person at the highest level in our government setting a tone or handling him or herself in such a way that you can you can appreciate it you know even if Ronald Reagan is is conservative 
he had a certain way of handling himself publicly and doing things publicly that wasn't just way out out on the other side. So today, uh, I just don't think we have a person at the helm who is attempting to um, represent everybody and uh, do what we all have become accustomed to as as uh, appropriate and polite company. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just crazy, and so he's given license to the radicals, the people who are um, who who had it in them. <laughs> so now it's coming out of them. You know, mm-hmm. they always say, "What's up in you?" It's going to come out at some mm-hmm. point, and mm-hmm. so uh, we have we don't have the voices that uh, we used to and uh, we need to have. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm concerned about how easy it is to sway people today. Mm. Uh, how um, how uh, I was Keith Stallworth and I were communicating about something, and I was telling Keith in in a, in a Facebook po- po- uh, uh, post that I was so concerned that we have people today who don't understand or don't listen to the information that's coming out. You know, you ask the question, I ask my employees this question in a newsletter: Where mm-hmm. do you get your information from? Mm, okay, <laughs> and, and okay. how do you how yeah. do you how do you uh, interpret your, the information that you get? Mm-hmm. So I'm concerned at how easily fooled people are. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. from both sides of the of the aisle, they put information out there that looks bad, um, that's wrong. You know, they circulating stuff that's no truth in it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But it's so easy to be fooled today, mm-hmm. and uh, and so with the 2020 election coming, we already know that the 2016 election there were uh, bad. Inf- bad players out there who put out bad information mm-hmm, and people mm-hmm, believed it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's there's some things that go out about how a black person was treated uh, by the police, but if you pay attention to the video, if someone was recording it from their phone, there would only be one angle. But when you watch it, it's all it's almost like a movie production. Mm-hmm. There, 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 so are, many different, <laughs> there are different angles, angles and all. Yeah. So, so it's really contrived just to kind of incite people. Mm-hmm. And you're easily fooled by what yes. you see. So, do you feel there's a leadership crisis think, in America? I think we somewhere uh, definitely. <laughs> if, you, if you're looking for leadership in the top of our country, whether it be a Republican or a Democrat, I think truly there is a void and a crisis in our community and our country with regards to leadership. Mm-hmm. And so, what what do we do? Yeah. What's the, what's the answer? Well, I think those of us at ground level have mm-hmm. to keep pushing hard to try to inform, educate, and redirect folk to where we need to be. I think we some of us are going to get criticized for trying to tell folk that's not true, mm-hmm. that's not real, mm-hmm. that it seems real, it makes you mad to look at it, mm-hmm. but it's not true, it's not real, and you need to stay the course. Don't mm-hmm. get distracted because I also mm-hmm. think there's a leader in our country that keeps trying to distract us okay. and uh, take us away from the things that are important and critical. Um, you know, we're trying to fool people and uh, keep them from completing the 2020 census because mm-hmm. a state like Michigan needs every person to complete the census mm-hmm. because the yes. political power of Michigan is is uh, is waning. Mm-hmm. It's the uh, Diminishing. We every ten years for the last um, thirty years, maybe mm-hmm. Michigan has lost a, congr- a congressman. Yes, and if the census is not where it needs to be for Michigan, Michigan will lose another congressperson. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so uh, it's just a steady um, dwindling of the leadership or the power in a community mm-hmm. like ours. Mm-hmm. But people are going to get distracted. Uh, there are a lot of people in Michigan, uh, particularly in southeastern Michigan who are going to be afraid to complete the census. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so as a result, you know, and but there's someone trying to distract them from doing mm-hmm. so. You know, mm-hmm. there, uh, I think there was, a, I think it's somewhere in Iowa I heard where they were counseling a, um, uh, some kind of outdoor fair because it, it had a heavy focus on Latin America and they were afraid that ICE was going to be raiding that uh, public event so mm-hmm. they're canceling the event because people are going to be reluctant and hesitant to of come of course so, yes yeah. so so what you're saying is that uh you believe yes there is a crisis and, and part of what's going on are these lots of distractions yes. that keep folk um off balance mm-hmm. or not mm-hmm. focused on mm-hmm. things that right. 
life issues yeah, that really right. matter to people. Right. And keep your um, eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the prize. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Keep your eyes so, on the prize. Absolutely <laughs> critical. So I just have appreciated this conversation and want to, as we're winding down, Charles, um, just I want you to just share with us a little bit about legacy and what you want your legacy to be. I mean, uh, what what do you want people to say about N. Charles Anderson and uh, how your leadership has made an impact? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm you know, other than the fact that he came, he saw, he conquered. You know. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. But, but you know, but I want people to say that uh, that I was a uh, dedicated and committed. That I was humble, but I was uh, committed to doing what was right and what was best for the people I saw, the people I served, and the people I work with. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. That I did not get deterred um, because of um, you know someone who was. Uh, dissing me so to speak but mm-hmm. I stayed the course and did the work that needed to be done and that um, I was a great golfer oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> a great singer yes <laughs> <laughs> do you sing, Charles? I do sing. Oh, well, now see, now see, see I, you walked right into that. Because people can tell you, you can go back and check my over 100 podcasts, yes. and you will see yes. that anyone who admitted with me that they were a singer gave me a tune, well, gave me a note or two. Come on. Let well, me hear it. Uh, as, we, as, we, as we're ending, yeah, well, <laughs> let me have a note I, I, or two. Well, you know, I mean, I... Uh, let's see what happened. My wife and I sang at our wedding, <gasps> our vow renewal. Oh, my and, goodness. Uh, How many years? 25. All right. And then uh, when I, we got married 25 years ago, I sang okay. a Peebo Bryson song oh, to her. N- now, see, now, see, he's still yeah. talking. Okay. So you're still talking, but you ain't singing. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't hear that. Come on. You know you knocked me off my feet. You came and changed my life worth meaning. You touched a very special part of me. When I thought my life was over. All right, (laughs) Charles Anderson and Charles Anderson, founder, CEO, Detroit Urban League, great golfer and a singer. (laughs) That's fabulous. Thank you so much. I just want to say one final thing. You know, when I worked for Mayor Archer, he spent a lot of time. making sure that the administration tried to change and, and knew the culture. Yes. But he had us spending time trying to learn the seven habits of highly effective people. Mm-hmm. And I always remind it as a facilitator of the workshops, and I sit, remind staff this today, it's the seven habits of highly effective people, not the seven things highly effective people know. Mm-hmm. It's the it, it's the things they do, uh-huh. not the habits. things they know. So, that's right oh what a one you so know see we could you could it. just write a book just, just on that yes. we could do a podcast yes. just on that yeah. it's habits because right. habits is action right. and it's about doing yes thank you so much charles anderson uh just do it yes. hey the committee of one yes. appreciate you. you and so my ignite to impact listener see you know, you come here, you listen, you can find out how how you can make an impact. One, two, three simple tips, stories uh, from influencers who themselves are in it and who are just doing it. I hope that you've enjoyed this conversation. I know I have. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to iTunes or iHeart. You know, iHeart Radio has become the number one place for podcasts. And Ignite to Impact has been on iHeart Radio for several years. So you can go right on over to iHeart Radio subscribe, download, and if you like what you hear, which I know you will, give me a five-star review, not a two or a three, but a five-star review. This is Dr. Geneva, your host, Ignite to Impact. Ignite to Impact.